This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Missy Fuller. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Call 727-9900 today for your free consultation. If you need a lawyer, you need Nelson. Welcome and thanks so much for joining us here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. Hi there, it's June 23rd. I'm Missy Kohler and we're so happy you're with us tonight. Well, Nevada Highway Patrol has released some dramatic dash cam video of a shootout last week between officers and a man suspected of shooting a highway worker in Eureka County. A Nevada Department of Transportation worker was shot and wounded by a motorist last Wednesday on State Route 278, about 15 miles south of I-80. Nevada Highway Patrol troopers quickly located the suspect vehicle as it traveled southbound on 278 toward Eureka. Officers deployed stop sticks, and a mile later, the vehicle drove off the roadway, coming to stop in the brush. That's when the suspect, identified as 34-year-old Zachary Minasali of Nevada City, California, got out and started shooting at officers. Go ahead! No! Watch yourself, one. He's in front. Drive right. Man, to see your heads. Man, to see your heads. Hey, right front, right front. Right front, right front. Together, a trooper and Eureka County deputy fired a total of 16 rounds. Minasali, who sustained a single gunshot wound, died from his injury. Nevada Highway Patrol says its investigation revealed that Minasali may have ties to an ongoing homicide investigation in Nevada City, California. The highway worker who was shot has been released from the hospital. Nevada Highway Patrol is investigating a deadly crash on the Southern Beltway in Las Vegas. A woman died Tuesday afternoon on the 215 Beltway near Interstate 15 when her vehicle collided with a box truck. Nevada Highway Patrol's preliminary investigation determined that a Honda Accord being driven by the victim and the box truck were both traveling eastbound on 215 when, according to witnesses, the Honda made an abrupt lane change and started to spin in front of the box truck. The truck struck the Honda, redirecting it into the concrete median barrier. The woman driving the Honda was transported to UMC Trauma where she died. This marks the Nevada Highway Patrol Southern Command man's 35th fatal crash, resulting in 43 fatalities this year. And a two-vehicle crash this morning here in Pahrump causes major damage to both vehicles. Two pickups collided at the intersection of Homestead Road and Elderberry Street Wednesday morning. The impact caused major damage to both vehicles. One of the trucks even lost a front wheel. Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue, deputies and auxiliary members all responded to the scene. All occupants declined to be transported to the hospital at the time of the crash. Traffic was blocked in both directions on Homestead Road during the investigation and cleanup of vehicles and debris on the roadway. A man has been arrested in Amargosa after deputies receive a call about an alleged assault. Deputy Nelson was dispatched on June 12th to Powerline and Anvil in Amargosa for the report of an assault. He met with Jacob Almeida, who said he was working for the reporting person and had recently gotten fired. He was asked to return the fob for the gate and pick up a couple of pieces of equipment that he had left and was told that he was not allowed back on the property. Almeida said that the reporting person began pushing him away from the garage. He got around him and continued toward the garage, where the reporting person caught back up to him and started hitting him. He allegedly said that he hit the reporting person one time in the face and grabbed a stick for protection. Deputy Nelson then spoke with the reporting person who said that he previously told Almeida he was not welcome back on the property. Almeida showed up and knocked on the trailer and then proceeded to make his way towards the garage and the victim started pushing him away and telling Almeida to get off the property. Almeida then got past him and continued toward the garage. 
According to the declaration of arrest, the victim got in front of Almeida and hugged him, still trying to keep him from the garage, and Almeida then punched him in the chest, and the victim returned that punch. At that time, the victim had fell to the ground, and Almeida had grabbed a piece of wood from inside the garage. Almeida reportedly proceeded to hit him with the piece of wood that is in excess of two feet and is considered a deadly weapon based on the damage it could do to one's body. Speaking with a witness, she stated that she was inside and watched the altercation through a window. She witnessed Almeida grab a piece of wood from inside inside the garage and saw him hitting the victim with it. The victim was bleeding from the one side of his mouth and both of his arms were covered in dust and had small cuts that were bleeding. He also had a bleeding cut on his leg. Jacob Almeida was placed under arrest for abuse of an older, vulnerable person and battery with a deadly weapon. He was transported to Nye County Detention Center and booked accordingly. We have more News 25 coming right up, so stay close. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, home prices reach a new high. Amazon's Prime Day is expected to generate record sales and Delta plans to hire more than 1,000 new pilots. Here's Angela Miles with today's Business First Brief. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell tells Congress widespread vaccinations, along with the Fed's monetary support, are giving the economy a booster shot. Home prices hit yet another record high. The median home price in May was $350,000, up 24% from May of last year, when the median home price was $283,500. Online sales are expected to go through the roof at Amazon. The 48-hour Prime Day event that started Monday likely surpassed $5.6 billion, good for an increase of 8.7% compared to last year. Delta is aiming high with its plan to hire. The airline will bring in more than 1,000 pilots on board by next summer. To find out where you can see us every day, go to businessfirstam.com. A Beatty man turns violent, injuring himself and medics before being restrained and arrested. On June 13th, deputies responded to Gemma's Cafe, located in Beatty, for a possible disturbance. When they arrived, they observed a chair laying in glass outside of the cafe. People exiting the building saying that a man inside was destroying things. Law enforcement entered through a back door to the kitchen and observed a male later identified as Kit Kipnis standing in the kitchen holding a cutting utensil. Kipnis immediately dropped the utensil. He was told to walk towards the deputy. He complied, was placed in restraints, and then placed into the back of a patrol car. While the deputy was collecting statements, Kipnis allegedly broke the back window out of the patrol vehicle using his head, causing injury to his upper left forehead. Medics responded. Witnesses on scene told law enforcement that Kipnis was first seen in the intersection of 2nd Street and Main Street in Beatty, driving a vehicle and shooting Roman candle-type fireworks at passing vehicles. Kipnis suddenly ran into the dining room area of Gemma's Cafe and was screaming at patrons. According to the declaration of arrest, Kipnis knocked a television off a shelf and threw an espresso machine to the floor, as well as throwing a dining room chair through the window. He then went into the kitchen area and started to throw various objects and yelling unintelligible things at the staff who ran out the back door, fearing that the man would hurt them. While in custody, medics were attending to his head, and Kipnis reportedly began to kick, spit, and headbutt the medical personnel. A medic attempted to hold his head steady to treat his wound, and he rolled over and bit him on his inner thigh. Another medic tried to restrain Kipnis and was kicked in the abdomen. Kipnis continued to thrash and act violent towards the medical staff that were attempting to provide first aid. When he finally calmed down, a medic was supporting his upper torso, and without provocation, Kipnis rolled his body and bit the medic's hand and knee. Kipnis was eventually restrained to a gurney and transported by ambulance to Desert View Hospital. Kit Kipnis was arrested for burglary of a business, assault on a protected person, battery on a protected person, and destroying property of another. Well, the former health care partners facility, also called Pahrump Medical Center, located on East Calvada Boulevard, was an agenda topic at the June 2nd Board of County Commissioners meeting. The county owns the property, which has several structures on it, and are now looking into possibly selling it. 
In the past, the county has leased out the property to Dr. Beatty, who subleased it to various health care providers. It currently only has two tenants in the back building. Nye County Commissioner Leo Blundo stated that there was a previous plan to move staff into the building, but it has been vacant for a number of years. Blundo mentioned a shortage of independent medical providers in the area and suggested the building be listed for sale and marketed towards medical providers that might offer low-cost or no-cost medical care to those in need of such a service. I'd like to sell this building. I'd like to sell it and also have a medical company come in and provide those medical services that I just described for the people here. Low cost, zero cost medical services, where if you want a doctor, you're able to see a doctor. When it came time for public comment, there was someone in the audience that was willing to come to Barump and offer just such a service. I'm the CEO for Silver State Health Services. We are a federally qualified healthcare center in Las Vegas. We have several clinics in Las Vegas where we help uh, homeless, we help veterans, we help people that are underinsured today. <clears throat> uh, we partner with a group called Freedom Medical Group who supplies all the technical resources in terms of doctors, nurses, medical assistants, frontline people. Um, and in combination with Freedom Medical Group, we're doing a lot of good for the community of Las Vegas. We see Pahrump as needing these services. We've heard testimonies today from other people. We would like to come to Pahrump and, and offer our services here to the community of Pahrump um, and use some of these federal funds that w have been allocated through us uh, in federal grants and um, federal resources. Just wanted to open that up, that uh, we are willing to come to Prom. Uh, all we would need is a facility to operate. But doesn't Silver State Health Services already have offices in Pahrump? And aren't they currently located just across the street from the Pahrump Medical Center? News 25 was a little confused too. So we reached out to the person that, at least as recent as an email received on April 15th, 2021, was titled as Regional Director of Nye County for Silver State Health and authorized to procure their advertising. Melissa Blundo, wife of Commissioner Leo Blundo. She told News 25 that she didn't work for Silver State Health, that she was only being a bridge between the Las Vegas company and Pahrump. We reached out to the CEO of Silver State Health, Mr. Maya Oka, who explained that Silver State Health's office in Pahrump was a sort of trial run for them. Public comment was in favor of trying to find a way to bring affordable health care to Pahrump. You know, we have veterans here. We have homeless here. We have other people here that need good general care. And, you know, we have some quality care here. We have the makings of, of building a strong foundation with that and being something special. We have heard from the commissioners. I'd like to call for the vote. Um, Commissioner Blundo. Blundo is aye. Cox. Aye. Jabor. Jabor is nay. Carboni. Everybody, aye. Strickland's aye. That motion carries 4-1. So the commissioners instructed staff to investigate the legalities of selling the property. We called one of the current tenants on the property, First Choice Pregnancy Center's director, Nancy Irwin, to see what she thought of the idea. She said she was unaware of the proposal before the board. All right, more news right after this. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. We're happy you're with us tonight. As COVID variants continue to spread, the World Health Organization remains concerned about what it describes as the inequitable distribution of vaccines. Even after 18 months, the ineffective use of public health and social measures increased social mixing and vaccine inequity continue to give COVID-19 an opportunity to mutate, spread, and kill. The global failure to share vaccines equitably is fueling a two-track pandemic that's now taking its toll on some of the world's poorest and most vulnerable people. Every region has countries that are now facing a steep increase in cases and deaths. In Africa, cases have increased by 52% just in the past week, and deaths have increased by 32%. And we expect things to only get worse. 
less than 1% of Africa's population has been vaccinated. Our global targets are to vaccinate at least 10% of the population of every country by September, at least 40% by the end of the year, and 70% by the middle of next year. These are the critical milestones we must reach together to end the pandemic. The brutal reality is that in an era of multiple variants, with increased transmissibility, potentially increased impact, we have left vast swathes of the population and the vulnerable population in Africa unprotected by vaccines in a context where health systems are already weak. Uh, and this is the consequence of the current unfair distribution of vaccines. If we had been distributing vaccines fairly and equitably, we may by now have protected those people most vulnerable on the African continent, and we simply have not done that. Well, life before the pandemic is slowly returning. Masks are no longer required for those who are vaccinated, and many people are now heading back to the office after spending the last year working at home. While some may welcome the normalcy, others could be feeling anxious. So how do you cope with all these changes? Brittany Rawl finds out. As COVID-19 restrictions continue to scale back, some people may start to feel anxious, which Cleveland Clinic psychologist Susan Albers says is normal. There is a wide range of emotions. Some people are very excited and others are very nervous. In some ways, it relates to your ability to adjust to new situations. And this is a new and unprecedented situation for all of us. So how do you cope with all these changes? She says, give yourself time to readjust. Research shows it can take up to 66 days to form a new habit. It can also be helpful to think about what exactly is bothering you. And finally, try not to judge others. It is tempting to question other people why they are still wearing their mask, but it's really important to remember that many people have underlying medical conditions or immune issues, and they feel safer continuing to wear their mask. Dr. Albers says returning to the office could be stressful too. Many people have grown comfortable working from home. She says if you haven't already gone back, be sure to mentally prepare. Imagery can be very powerful. The same goes for getting your desk organized. Consider rearranging your work environment to give you more space. You may want to rearrange your desk. You can also move chairs further apart. You can also create some natural barriers. Stand behind your desk instead of next to a person in front of you. She knows it may be a tough transition, but try to find the silver lining. What have you gained from being at home? And is there anything that you can apply and bring back with you as you return to work? For Cleveland Clinic, I'm Brittany Rawl. Well, Dr. Albert says if you feel like your stress or anxiety isn't going away, you may want to talk to a medical professional who can offer some advice. It's time once again to meet a great pet in need of a loving home. For today's Save a Pet, Darby O'Donnell introduces us to Petey Jr. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with Petey Jr. Um, so his name is Petey Jr. because there is another Petey here, and they look very similar. Um, Petey Jr. is an adult male. He is a pit bull mix, gorgeous puppy. He has all this excess skin right here, which I know I love on a dog. Um, he has a little squishy face, and he has these beautiful little tan spots on his ears and on his back and down on his little feet. Um, super duper, very mellow personality. Um, he he is a dog that you will need to come out to the yard, spend a minimum of 15 minutes with because he needs to go sniff everything, do his business, and then he's like, okay, I'm ready to come and get a cuddle from you. He loves attention, just a sweet little man, just looking for his forever home. Um, if you wanna come and see PD Jr. or any of his friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, please give him a call ahead of time to make an appointment, 775-751-7020, or you can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. Bye, PD. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. John Kohler staring out the KPVM weather window. Look at that, clouds even, maybe a little rain, some wind, it's crazy weather out there. We'll tell you all about it when we return. News 25 Weather is brought to you by 
Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. Lovely to see you on a hump day and uh, loving the weather. The temperatures finally moderating. Look at the temperatures up and down the state. Fernley Fallon, you're about 90, 92. Carson City feeling good at 86. Tonopah and uh, Goldfield lumping in at 84 degrees. Heating up as we head south, as it do, uh, 90 degrees. And Beatty Amargos has got 93 along with Las Vegas. Out in Death Valley, it's just a scant 105 degrees. It's dang near tolerable here in the Paradise of Rump where the air is pure, the grass is green, and everybody's kind of dewy. It's uh, a cloudy 87 degrees currently. It was uh, 90 earlier. Uh, humidity really kicking up 21% as the sun rose this morning in all its glory at 527 a.m. It'll set this evening at 8.05. That means we got one more minute of night. Yeah, go night. Low tonight, 71 degrees. Southeasterly winds 10 miles per hour. Actually, they'll be uh, hanging with us pretty much the whole week, uh, clearing out the clouds tomorrow and the next day. Cloud coming back just a little bit on Saturday, and the temperatures are going to start increasing. Saturday, Sunday, we'll be back into the triple digits, 105, 108, 109 on Monday. It doesn't look like it's really moderating for the rest of the week. Looks like we'll pick up a little more humidity, some cloud cover as we head on into the next seven days. So things to uh, plan for and look forward to, I guess, on the weekend. Maybe get an extra bag of ice and, and uh, some iced tea and head on down to the pool this weekend. All right, back to the desk. It's Missy, Indiana. Kind of liking a little bit of the cooler weather. Yeah, the cool feels good, but the wind doesn't feel so good. Yeah. I could do without that. We have a little reprieve for a couple of days and then back up. Back right. up. Oh, well, welcome well, to summer. We'll, I know. Well, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm Deanna. I'm Missy. Thanks for watching and have a good night. Good night.